people. I want to, you know, thank everybody, and I just wanted to make sure the whole leadership team was, was here. And, um, you know, I'm excited about this next term and through lame duck of things we need to get accomplished. And obviously, we just went through an election cycle that the Democrats actually had success. You know, as it stands, we have picked up four seats. And that just is a testament of what we think is the right thing to do. We've been pushing a middle class agenda for the working class of the state of New Jersey. We're going to keep advocating, as we have been for the last two years, on our transportation infrastructure crisis that we have, that that needs to be fun. I think that is one of the key components of us being able to be successful. Once we get that accomplished, that will spur our economy. And I have said, you know, time and time again, if you create those jobs, those jobs will create those people to have money to be able to buy goods, services, and that's how you have not a trickle-down economy, a bubbling up one, so that way we can do a lot of the things we have. We have a statutory uh, obligation of funding our pensions, that we have to do that. As Democrats, we've been trying to do that. We need to make sure college is affordable to everyone. We need to keep investing in education, trying to see how we can get to fully fund our, um, our formula. If we did that, a lot of districts would be able to get a lot of relief that they're underfunded. Now, obviously, revenues for the state of New Jersey we need. Because at the end of the day, you know, the Gannett, I know, ran a series that talked about, you know, signing a pledge to be able to do uh, property taxes, you know, 10 percent. Everybody wants to do that. We want to do that. But we're trying to be realistic. It takes revenues to do that. Something like that, it's about $2.5 billion. So we need to work together to do the right thing for the residents of the state of New Jersey. And I think that the voters know and understand, and this was a referendum on the Republican Party. It wasn't about money spent. It was about good candidates. And it just shows the failed policies of this administration for six years that have crushed the middle class while protecting millionaires, that that's all we have had. Tax <coughs> breaks for them, that veto after veto. And now we almost got to one, something I talked about, if we could get to a veto-proof majority. We got close. We're at 52. But I think now the Republicans will be mindful. If they vote some, for something the first time around, if it was good then, when it comes back, you should be voting for it because the voters are looking at you. So I think it's important. I have an exceptional team here, and for the next term, I've had uh, the privilege of serving as the speaker for this past term, and I will continue. My majority leader, Lou Greenwald, which I've come up in a minute. Speaker pro tem, Jerry Green. Shavanda Sumter as our conference chair. And Gary Sher that did a phenomenal job with the budget. Uh, which two former budget chairmen here, tough time with no money. He has actually done a great job. With that, you know, I'm going to let uh, the majority leader say a few words, everybody, and then we'll take some questions. Go ahead, Luke. Thank you. We're very fortunate to stand here. We're very proud of what we've accomplished. The reality is that I think we were successful on election day because we talked about solving problems. Um, the Republican Party ran, I think, a mistaken statewide campaign, kind of with some kind of morphed idea that change will come by ending 13 years of legislative rule in the Assembly. Truth of the matter is, the best public policy that we have done uh, under our leadership uh, is legislation that we've done in a bipartisan effort. You know, we did pension reform in a bipartisan effort. We did arbitration reform in a bipartisan effort. We did caps on property taxes in a bipartisan effort. The problem is that we lived up to the promises on that legislation. We made sure that we presented budgets that funded the pension. The Republican Party didn't. And that came back to, to bite them. We talked about not just supporting women's health, but we actually put dollars behind women's health. And the Republican Party, unfortunately, voted with one mind and one heart and voted the views of one person in Governor Christie. And I think that backfired on them. Our campaigns were district specific and they were focused on the needs of those communities, whether it was uh, gaming in South Jersey and the loss of jobs in Atlantic City, 
whether it was tourism and foreclosures down in Cape May, whether it was guns and women's health in District 11, it was a, these were campaigns that were focused around the issues of the people that we represent. The speaker talked about key problems in the state of New Jersey. Transportation trust fund, living up to our commitment on pensions, and truly a continued crisis around tax policy in New Jersey. We are willing to do all of those with bipartisan support. We hope that the Republican Party learned a lesson on Election Day. Our door is open to them to come in and work with us for solutions on those issues in a bipartisan way. John Bramnick likes to talk a lot about doing things in a bipartisan fashion. We came across the political aisle in a very uncomfortable way to solve a pension crisis on issues like transportation trust fund, tax policy reform, and true solution to pensions, starting with how we make our payment. That is going to be and take a requirement from the Republican Party to come to the table, sit down at the table, work on deep dive public policy issues, not 30 second sound bites. If they are unwilling to come to the table, we will do it without them. We have a mandate now to do it without them, and we, are, we will move ahead. But the truth of the matter is, and I will say it again and again and again, the best public policy we've done is the policy that we do together. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This last uh, two months, I like to feel, have shown me that the Democratic Party is moving in the right direction. As chairman of the party in Union County, which is Central Jersey, and it just gives me a great pleasure to sit up here and be part of South Jersey, North Jersey, and I can't forget <laughs> my speaker. We're all on the same page, even in John Brandon's backyard. I never dreamed of the day that the Democrat Party would take control of Summit. So that tells you exactly the condition of the Republican Party. I'm not going to repeat what they have said so far, but I think we have a tremendous team with great leadership. And I like to feel we're moving in the right direction. Uh, people used to laugh when they saw me out there actually physically after 30 years knocking on doors. But I thought it was very important that we send a strong message. And this message is all about the people. We're talking about education. We're talking about women's rights. And the speaker had given me the opportunity in the last seven years to be able to talk about housing, something that the governor has totally ignored. It's embarrassing, even in suburban communities, where people are saying to me, Mr. Green, my kids can't even come back and live in the community. So we have a lot on the table, but I think we're heading in the right direction. And under the leadership that we have today, as with the Democratic Party, um, trust me, we're going to be very proud in eight years when we can look around and say, Speaker, you've done a great job. People of the state of New Jersey, you've done a great job. We're just getting started. And under the leadership that we have, we're going to have some results. Again, I want to tell my team, I'm so proud of you because of the fact that for the first time now, we've gone into the Republican districts and let them understand the problem that they're having, putting food on the table. So again, we're moving in the right direction. Again, it takes a team effort, and I think we've got a great team here. Again, I want to thank the speaker. Thank you. Thank you. I echo the sentiments of our leadership, and it's a privilege to serve. Uh, the voters have spoken. Uh, we Democrats were right on the issues. The people are looking for reforms. Our policies are right on the issues. And we're looking forward to getting back to work with the majority of folks who are willing to work with us, because now the Republicans have to talk and hear the voices of the people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Gary? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the privilege to serve again as budget chair under your leadership and direction and that of a majority leader. Um, the speaker uh, clearly said it. Uh, the issues are very obvious to all of us in New Jersey in terms of solutions to problems, whether it be the TTF, whether it be higher ed funding, whether it be K through 12 funding. Um, the issues all tend to revolve around the same issue, and that is of what it is that we need and how it is that we pay for it. Clearly, the voters of the state made an historic determination on Tuesday. I believe it's not since 1979 that the Democrats have ever held a majority of this magnitude. 
That is a plebiscite upon not only this campaign, but for the past two years, if not greater, of Republican priorities and statements. We're seeing clearly a rejection of what it is that they've been speaking about, not only on a statewide <coughs> basis, but a local basis as well. It has been so easy for Republicans to say that won't work without providing a response. They no longer can do that. If they want to be part of the discussion, they must indeed participate in the discussion, not only to tell us what is not good, but to tell us what in fact is and how it is to pay for it. I look forward with great anticipation to working with my colleagues in the Budget Committee, to working closely with the Speaker, the Majority Leader, the Speaker Pro Tem, as well as our conference chair, and the other leadership and members of the uh, Democratic Caucus. I think it's going to be an interesting two years, um, and hopefully good years for the state of New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.